Now, it's pretty apparent right off the bat that there's Hot Wheels on everything here, the Hot Wheels logo. You've been in the game a long time. You must know everybody at Mattel, at Hot Wheels. You have to have a strong relationship. Tell us about that. To be that 10-year-old kid buying Hot Wheels, seeing that everything was from California. I mean, California was the thing. Oh, yeah. To write letters to Mattel, and they would send me stuff at 10 years old, to having my books and calling up people at Mattel, and they know who I am. Right. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I died and went to heaven. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't start out that way. When, I, when we first decided to do the book, Mattel wasn't involved. They were just, we were just gonna do the book and no Hot Wheel logo, just, you know, uh, Mike Zarnock's variations. And um, when my editor, Paul Kennedy, called me and he, he says, um, Mattel's coming on board. So what do you mean Mattel's coming on board? He says, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna sanction the book. They're gonna, they're gonna authorize your book. Very cool. So I, in, in my room at home, I have a picture of the first book without the Hot Wheels flame and the one licensed by Mattel with the flame. I mean, it's just amazing that, that Hot Wheels and me, I, just like I said, growing up, being a super Hot Wheels collector, right. I got the collector kit. I was, I was probably the first guy to get the collector kit because I used to write them letters all the time. I never sent that dollar. Just one day it showed up at my house. It was amazing. So to, to be that kid and then end up today knowing all the people that I know at Mattel, Chris Parker and, and, and uh, Carson Lev, and it, it's just amazing that they call me, I call them. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it, it's a total dream come true. Well, you've got to see yourself as an asset to the hobby and the fact that you are a collector. You're out there in the trenches. These guys are still in the corporate world. They're getting input from you. You're giving them your feedback. They're talking to you. It's got to be a really symbiotic type of thing where you're trading ideas. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's been times that, you know, uh, when Carson Love was there, he would call me and say, you know, did they ever make this? Did you ever find one of these? Or, you know, do you have some, oh. Yeah. So the factory is calling you yeah. to find out what they make. Can Amazing. You, can you get me some pictures of some red lines so we can do a, a, a calendar? Uh, so I, I am so honored, honored to have that kind of relationship with them. And to have them call, you know, we, we were talking one day about the drag strip demon line. Right. And I said, you know how cool it would be to do my old race car? And they just blew it off, you know, we blew it off. And like a week later, Mark Morse calls me and says, uh, were you serious about doing your old race car as the drag strip demon? Um, yeah. <laughs> so he says, all right, well, we'll send the contract. So here is my old race car yeah. as a Hot Wheel. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's got to be a great feel. Oh, it's, it's it's, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, just to, to be able to do the things that I do with my hobby, I never, ever thought that it would be like that. Well, let's talk about it. You said the race car. What's your current project? What are you building? I understand you're building a nasty old pickup. I'm building a little S10, and 98 S10 Roadster. We cut the roof off of it. We're bringing it down about that far off the ground. Uh, we're going to do it old school. It's going to be like a 32 S10. We have a real short box on it. We shortened up the chassis 17 inches. And you're doing all the work yourself. Yes. This is a hands-on. Yep, right there in my garage at home. Um, my, both my sons, Cody and Chris, uh, are helping me with it. We're going to do uh, 327 automatic, tunnel ram, two deuces. I mean, just really, really cool old stuff. It's a grocery like, getter. Yeah, 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 you know, throw the stuff in the back. But yeah, um, and we're talking about maybe doing the altered again. Nice. So if I can find uh, a chassis, or uh, actually a body, and I'll build the chassis, and, and we'll go that way. I, I know where there's an old Hemi sitting right now in a really short chassis, uh, and, I'm, and I'm working on trying to buy it. Don't tell my wife if she's around here anymore. Never say a thing, man. But, um, but yeah, I'm working on that. So cool. there's always some projects going on. Now, what's the future of Hot Wheels as you see it? Do you see this going on for I years see, and years? I see so many things in the future right now for Hot Wheels, Hot Wheels collectors, uh, the books, TV stuff. Uh, there's just, the younger generation is coming up still in love with Hot Wheels. And you can see the, um, the changes, like I said earlier about the muscle cars that we grew up with, the AC Cobras, the Super V six packs. Uh, Mattel is, is now doing the Super V six packs and, and the Challengers and things like that, but they're also doing the tuner cars for the kids. 
Right. So right. the the younger generation is having their muscle cars. Right. right. Whatever they are, and it's. It's coming that way, so it's translating. I, yeah, I see it. I see it growing and growing and growing. So maybe we'll see hybrid Hot Wheels someday. And uh, uh, well, <laughs> it's a great hobby. It, it's amazing to me when we come. We see the depth of it, and the most impressive thing is how much you know about this and how in tune you've been with this particular branch of the hobby all your it, life. It just it just happened to be like second nature. It it just. I, I, I soaked up. Ask me what I had for lunch, I have no idea. But <laughs> ask me about a car from 1975, I can tell you what it You've is. You got it, yeah, yeah. Well, let's have a walk around. There's some interesting sights around. There's a lot of cool stuff here, so let's go check it out.